Hi guys, my name is Megan. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to answer some frequently asked questions about Triple PD. This might be quite a long video today, so I will put all the timestamps below so you can just click on each individual question that you want answered so you don't have to sit there through the whole thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, hopefully that makes it a bit easier for you. Okay, so these questions have come directly from my comment section and I have replied in the comments, but I wanted to make a video just in case some a new person who's stumbled upon my channel wants some answers as well. So here we go. First question is, did you ever have brain fog? And the answer is, hell yes, I had brain fog. I know that brain fog can mean t different things to different people. So when I say brain fog, I mean like my brain literally felt foggy. It was like my head wasn't clear. I wasn't um, able to think very clearly sometimes. And I know that sometimes brain fog means that people forget words or whatever and that did happen to me sometimes but when i say brain fog it was like the actual physical feeling of having a foggy head so yes i had that question two is did you ever get a swaying feeling when you lay down and i feel like i'm gonna answer yes to like all of these questions but um yes i felt that intensely that was pretty much the main symptom for me um it was always the worst when i was either sitting still like leaning back on a chair or laying down still i do feel this slightly now but it is hardly I, I don't really notice it anymore if i really focus on it i can kind of feel it but i can easily ignore it and i know that it will just go away as i keep on doing the practices question three is did you ever feel floaty or like you were going to faint and yes to both of those. Um, floaty is how I described it pretty much all the time when I didn't have any other words for it. I would always feel like I was like, you know, swaying side to side or back and forth. And that was a huge symptom for me uh, in the beginning. I mean, it pretty much was the main symptom all the way through as well. So yes, I felt that. And in terms of feeling faint, I have definitely felt that a few times, like quite lightheaded. Lightheadedness wasn't my main symptom, but it definitely happened to me sometimes, um, especially if I stood up too fast. I mean, that used to happen to me before Triple PD anyway, but yeah, it kind of got more intense as the time went on. Question four is, did you ever get fatigued? Um, <laughs> yes. I felt fatigued all the time. And I remember there was one time when I took a shower in the morning and I felt absolutely drained afterwards. I, I was exhausted. I just had to lay on the sofa for the rest of the day because the shower literally took all of my energy. So yeah, I have 100% felt fatigued. And I remember there was even a period of time for two weeks straight where I was fatigued every, every second of every day. Like, I mean, to the point where I was like tired to even lift my arm. And I was terrified that something wrong was happening, like something really serious was going on. But this, this is just a response from the nervous system. So we actually have three stages of the nervous system. The top one is the ventral vagal, which is where we feel calm and relaxed. And then we have the sympathetic in the middle, which is where we feel the fight or flight. And then we have dorsal vagal at the bottom, which is that collapsed feeling. And I was definitely in dorsal vagal a lot because I was in fight or flight a lot. So those two really go hand in hand because your nervous system can only take so much fight or flight. It's gonna collapse at some point. It, it can't keep that up forever because it's not meant to. And the normal, you know, the healthy nervous system should be able to go from fight or flight back to ventral because that's what, that's what animals do. You know, we get frightened and then we like, oh, okay, it's fine. It's not actually a threat. But when you are in fight or flight constantly, your body can only take so much, so it's gonna collapse you eventually. It's gonna be like, look, I can't do this anymore. Your adrenal system is absolutely exhausted. It's just, it just needs a break. So that is what that fatigue is. And I know it's scary, but it is just a normal response from an overstimulated nervous system. So the way to fix that is to just allow it to be there. You know, just tell yourself that this is nothing serious going on. It's just my nervous system trying to calm down and gather itself back together to get back up to ventral vagal. There are ways you can speed that up, I suppose. You can do somatic tracking, the deep breathing, anything you can do to try and regulate your nervous system will help you bring that up to ventral vagal much faster. 
Okay, question five is, did I ever get nauseous? And yes, I did, but it wasn't very often. Um, nausea, thank God, was not one of my main symptoms. But I remember a few times where I felt like I was actually going to throw up and I never did. I've never thrown up this whole three years. Um, but I definitely felt nausea a few times and it is very, very, very common to feel nausea with vestibular migraine, with triple PD, with all of it because it's a nervous system response, you know, we feel it in our stomach, we feel sick to the stomach when we are nervous about something, you know, so it's not surprising that people feel nausea. Question six is, did I ever feel my heart beating really fast? And could I feel my heart beat in my head? And the answer is yes. Um, my resting heart rate was about 95 for the majority of this illness. Um, and it's only recently come down to 60. I've actually, I actually tracked it and it's now 60 so I can safely say that I am more chilled than I've ever been but yes my heart would race actually and I would feel it in my head and the weird part is that I would feel my heart beat in my head when I was laying down so if something was against my head I could really feel it then and it would feel as though my heartbeat was the one rocking me back and forth and it was like my heartbeat was rocking my body because my body just didn't understand the movement that was happening so yes definitely experienced that Question seven is, did I ever feel like I was walking on a trampoline or a boat? And the answer is, oh yes. Huge symptom for me. In fact, when it first began, that was the only symptom I had. Uh, it was very strange. I could barely like bring words to how it felt, but um, I eventually realized that it was like walking on a trampoline, like marshmallows or something. Like the floor was just giving way every time I stepped on it. I actually remember in the beginning, I was walking around and I felt okay walking, but then as soon as I stopped, the ground would just start bouncing constantly. And it was the most bizarre feeling in the world. It was horrible. It made my head feel like it was not stable. I was like, what is going on? And um, that eventually shifted to being, um, every with every step I took, it would be bouncing. And then when I was still, it wasn't there. Like symptoms can really change around. And that was the most confusing part for me. I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> But the fact that symptoms do shift and change just shows you that it's nothing serious, you know, because it's just doing whatever it wants. So yes, to answer your question, yes, I definitely felt that. Question eight is, did I have head pressure? And if you've watched my previous videos, you will know that the answer to this is yes. Head pressure was a huge symptom for me and it was terrifying. It was one of my scariest symptoms because I would feel like my brain was literally swelling. It felt like someone was pressing down on my head, like someone was squeezing my head. There was a band around my head. It came with like headaches as well and the dizziness was always a bit worse when the head pressure was happening. So it was always a really scary symptom for me. Question nine is, did I ever have the sensation of needles in my head? This is a very specific symptom and my answer is yes, I did. I would actually say that it happened in bursts rather than it being constant. I remember when I was walking once, um, suddenly my head just felt like it had been electrocuted and that is the closest thing I can say to needles. It was like, yeah, it was like needles slash electric shock and that would happen occasionally but it didn't happen that often. But I can say that yes, that I definitely felt that way before. Question 10, did I ever have any pain migraines? Um, yes, I had, I think I had two in August, 2019. Uh, I had gone through another stressful period. The store I was working at got um, robbed quite aggressively. And I had a migraine that afternoon and that was the first ever migraine I've ever had. But that wasn't the beginning of the symptoms. The symptoms were already kind of there, but this kind of made it even worse. And another time was just randomly during the day. I think it was the time after I had a shower that completely drained me. Then I had a migraine for the rest of the day. I just wanted to be in a dark room alone. And I think that those were the only two. I might have had a really bad headache on the third time, but it wasn't a migraine. But I will say that with my the migraines that I had, I never had any like visual aura or anything that you might think was classically a migraine. It was just an intense pain in my head um, and I needed to have like a cold rag on my head to make it slightly more bearable. So yes, I have had those. Question 11, did I have derealization and depersonalization with this? Oh my God, yes. I, uh, I definitely remember a few specific times um, usually it would happen at dinner, 
so I would be looking down at my food and suddenly it would look like I wasn't the one eating it or I would be holding my phone and suddenly it would look like I wasn't the one holding it it was like whose hands are these you know it was a really out of body experience and it was so scary um yeah I remember it would just hit me randomly usually towards the end of the day it would just come out of nowhere and completely neutralize me it was honestly so scary to feel like you weren't in your body and I totally feel for anyone going through that because it is terrifying but I now know that it is just a threat response from the body from the nervous system again um, and although it's terrifying it's not serious and I know it feels like it is but this is basically your brain trying to take you out of all of the fear trying to take itself out of the fear really like just to detach from it but it actually makes you feel even more scared so bless it it's trying its best but it doesn't really know what it's doing but yeah that it is a horrible symptom and it is extremely common with uh, triple pd and vestibular illnesses in general question 12 did i ever get the feeling of being dragged to one side or like my balance was off uh, yeah, <laughs> I would usually veer, well, usually it would be to the left, but sometimes it was the right as well. I would definitely feel like I was being dragged to one side 100%. I used to complain about that a lot, especially when I turned too quickly. I would literally fall to that side. It was just random. It was very random, but I have 100% felt that way before. And it is, again, a very, very common symptom of triple PD. I would make sure you get like, you know, medical clearance because sometimes feeling like you are being dragged to one side could be something to do with the pressure in the ears as well. You know, it could be an inner ear problem that is like easily treatable. So definitely check that first. Um, but if it's not and you know that it's triple PD, then it is also a very common symptom of that because your, your brain just doesn't know which way is up. And yeah, I felt like my balance was off <laughs> all the time, pretty much. I was never fully still, I was never stable, and I felt like Bambi trying to walk. Yeah, I was just a mess. Spatially, I was absolutely a nightmare. My brain was trying so hard to work out which way was up, but it just couldn't, and yeah, I um, I really feel for you if you had this symptom, but it does go away because I no longer feel that way. <laughs> Question 13, did I ever have light or sound sensitivity? Uh, yes, I did. Light sensitivity, not so much, but I had sound sensitivity really badly. You know, dishes clanging or the cutlery together would just actually feel like it was piercing through my ears into my brain and it would be horrible. I had to wear earplugs at dinner because people's voices, them talking, was just too much for my brain to handle. I know people who have had both light sensitivity and sound sensitivity, so both are extremely common. But for, for me, my brain decided to go with sound sensitivity, so there you go. Question 14, did I ever have tinnitus or a feeling of pressure in my ears? Um, yes to both. <laughs> I have had tinnitus, sometimes it would be like a, a ringing that would last for 20 seconds or so, but sometimes the ringing would last for a whole day. Um, but I also had this kind of like, like white noise in my left ear. It's been there for months now, but it is really quiet, so I hard, I don't notice it when I'm talking or whatever. I only notice it at night when it's really quiet, but even then it's not loud enough to like keep me awake or like make me want to, you know, rip my insides out from frustration. But I have had ringing that has been so loud that I have to listen to music to block it out, but that hasn't lasted. But I know that you can get rid of tinnitus completely. People who have had tinnitus themselves said it's gone away. Again, check out the Steady Coach and also check out um, Joey Remini on that. She has some good videos on tinnitus and how it can go. So yeah, check those out. Question 15, did I ever get facial numbness? Hell yeah, I did. Uh, it was always on the left side, like on my jaw, all the, lo all the way along here, sometimes up to my cheekbone and sometimes even above my left eyebrow, it would happen. I felt like my face was like drooping to one side, but it obviously wasn't. But yeah, it was, it was a horrible symptom and it would always happen when I was really anxious. So I think it was just like a nervous system response to anxiety because it hasn't happened for a long time now but it does happen occasionally when I've been quite anxious or stressed or, you know, now I just, when I'm, when it's happening, I'm like, okay, what's happened? What have I done that's maybe made me a bit stressed? But yeah, I know a lot of people who have had this symptom and neurologists are like, well, 
we don't know what that is and there's nothing wrong with you so you're fine and I hate when they say that because there obviously is something going on but it doesn't mean that it's a physical thing like physical problem it's it could just be a nervous system response and that's what it was for me question 16 did I ever have a root canal this is a very specific question and I have to say no I've never had a root canal I've never had anything done to my teeth that require surgery so I know that some people have said that their triple PD started after a dental thing. Um, I don't really know much about that because it hasn't happened to me, but I hear that it has happened to some people. So that's definitely a valid thing that happens. I, I don't, I really don't have an answer to why that does happen, but it's probably either you were fearful of going or maybe it made you slightly dizzy and then it kind of just stayed because you were focused on it. I, I don't really know. Maybe it could be an alignment thing, like your jaw has to now kind of realign itself if you've taken a tooth out. It might have to readjust and maybe that's put some pressure on your neck somehow. Um, so if you have had a root canal, maybe check out the kind of chiropractic work in that sense. Because um, I definitely went to a chiropractor and it did help, but not in the long run, unfortunately. Um, but that, yeah, that could be the reason why it's happened to you after a root canal. But don't quote me on that, you know, I'm not a doctor. I, I haven't experienced that myself, so I'm sorry I couldn't be more help with that one, but yeah. Question 17 is, did I ever think the symptoms could be related to my heart? And I never thought it would be my heart. Um, I thought that isn't really possible. I know that sometimes it can be like, POTS but my symptoms didn't line up with that and I, I kind of knew it wasn't that but my neurologist referred me to a cardiologist just to be sure and yeah there was nothing wrong with my heart. I do recommend to get all avenues of your body checked out just so you can have reassurance that it's not anything serious uh, so yeah that wasn't the case for me. Question 18 is what are my symptoms like now? Uh, it's a good question because they are always changing and they've changed since I last answered that question. Nowadays I don't really notice them that much. The symptoms that's left is kind of like a dull, I want to say a dull pressure I suppose in the back of my head, sometimes in my forehead but it's kind of in the background. I don't really notice it at all. I'm so used to it now <laughs> and it doesn't really affect my day-to-day -day, um, activities. I go out shopping, I go out walking, I go to work, I drive around, I go out with my friends you know I, I don't really let it stop me the only thing I haven't done is go on holiday or anything like long haul traveling I'm still a little bit nervous to do that but I'm sure the day will come very soon I do still have slight floating when I lay down still but again it's very much in the background um, as I'm looking around I kind of like my head is slightly adjusting to it it's not really my vision but I just kind of feel a a fuzziness in my head as I look around um, but again it's very mild and it's not like I have to stop and be like whoa it's like you know it just it's just trying to catch up to what I'm doing and I, I just let it I am not really bothered by them anymore sometimes I get frustrated again if I am due on my cycle every month right before that it can be a little bit flared up but Again, I'm still going to work, I'm still going to the gym. I would say the symptoms still stop me from going on very long walks. Um, walking was always a big challenge for me. I could probably walk for like an hour without feeling worse, but then after an hour, I'd probably wanna like sit down and just rest for a little bit um, because it can make my head feel a bit stirred up. But it does depend on the day. Like at work, for example, I work four hours per shift. And sometimes I don't notice the symptoms all the way through. Like I can walk around, drive around for four hours and feel absolutely fine. Um, but other days, like for example, last night, um, towards the end of my shift, I was feeling really quite woozy and I was like, oh, this sucks. Um, hasn't happened for a while. But I think it was because it was my first shift back after a long break. So that could be why, you know, I wasn't really used to that again. I had like a week and a half off of work. So that's probably why that happened. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, I still kind of, I don't avoid them, but I don't, I was never really a hike person before, but I kind of am now and I really want to start doing it more often. So I am trying to walk more and more still, and I'd say my limits are at about four hours, I suppose, not of continuous walking, but of like doing stuff for four hours. I think that's probably 
what I can do right now and then I'll probably need to rest and then I could probably go out again. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Um, it doesn't really get in the way of my life. I am still sometimes frustrated about it, but I know that it's just getting better and better. So I'm kind of chill about it all now. Question 19 is, did relapses occur? And oh my God, yes, they did. Every, every week for a while it was happening. Like I would have three good days and then two really bad days, four good days and then like 17 really bad days. You know, it was just so up and down in the beginning. I had absolutely no prediction of what it would be like. I had no way of making plans in the future, which I am doing now, by the way. Um, you know, I can kind of tell now that I'm gonna be fine. Uh, relapses are so, so common and they happen to literally everyone I've ever spoken to. At one point last year, before I met the steady coach, I had a two month relapse that was just awful. I felt like I was completely back to the beginning and that all my hard work has just gone out the window, but of course that wasn't true. I even had some relapses after I met the steady coach, you know, as I was doing the proper healing journey, I, I felt worse before I felt better but it only took about two months to feel, you know, as good as I had felt back then. And obviously it's just gotten better and better since then. And I haven't really had any relapses. I don't really count them as relapses anymore. If I have like an iffy day, I don't think, oh man, it's all coming back. Like this is a relapse. I just take it to mean, I just need a little bit of a break. Like, I just need a little bit of a rest and then I'll be fine again tomorrow. You know, I usually just need to rest for one day and then, I'm fine again. So relapses are so common and they get less and less intense as you heal, in my opinion. Question 20 is, did the symptoms gradually decrease over time? Uh, I'm gonna say yes, but with ups and downs. <laughs> so that sounds weird, but yeah, I would say from November 2021, when I met the steady coach, that was when I consider myself like starting the healing journey for real. Since then, the symptoms have gradually declined, but they sometimes go like this, but it's all the time it's doing up and down, it's going down, if you know what I mean. So yeah, I'd say they gradually disappeared, well, gradually decreased um, with some ups and downs, yeah. Question 21, how did I manage the symptoms? Um, great question. So before I met the steady coach, before I started the proper healing journey, I wasn't really managing them <laughs> very well at all. I was kind of just crying about them, getting really frustrated about them, and I never really fully accepted the situation. So before then, I was just managing them as best I could. I was trying to just ignore them, I suppose. That was my tactic before. Trying to ignore them and failing miserably, getting frustrated. <laughs> that was my life pretty much every day for a while. But when I met the steady coach, when I started the healing journey, I began managing them very differently. I kind of had more self-compassion. I managed them by doing deep breathing and the somatic tracking. Somatic tracking was basically a way for me to lessen the anxiety or any frustration I was having about the symptoms in the moment. Um, but I would also use it every day to kind of gradually decrease the anxiety over time, which did work. I would also use the deep breathing anytime I felt my symptoms increasing. I would immediately do the deep breathing and try and really relax my nervous system. And it really works so well to relax your body because when I do the deep breathing, I physically feel my diaphragm relax, everything just loosens up and it makes me feel so much more relaxed. I used to do that every time my symptoms would increase. Every time I was gonna go out and do something new, I would use that. And I would also give myself enough time to rest if I really need it. I would kind of manage them in the moment, it's very it's a very individual process every day. The symptoms are gonna be different every day, so I would recommend you make a list, either a mental list or a physical list, of things you know work to calm you down, to make you feel like you are managing the symptoms in a way that allows you to continue your daily life. And that included, you know, somatic tracking, deep breathing, getting in the bath, um, watching a movie, allowing myself to rest at home, um, drink lots of water, <laughs> you know, just make sure that I am comfortable, make sure that I'm not putting too much pressure on myself to do things and just looking after yourself, be kind to yourself, try to manage the stress, that's a huge one. I hope that was a helpful answer. <laughs> Question 22, 
how did I get diagnosed? So this is a long process for me. Um, it doesn't have to be for you, but my GP had no clue what I was talking about in the beginning. So I went to my GP first. I told her about the symptoms and she gave me this steroid spray, told me it was probably labyrinthitis, which I knew it wasn't because I had researched about triple BD and I was like, this is what I have. Anyway, I humoured her. I took the steroid spray, I didn't use it. Um, and then she told me to come back in eight weeks time if it was still the same and I was like, well, okay. So after six weeks, I called her up and I said, I cannot live like this anymore. Please refer me to someone else. So she was like, okay, I'll refer you to an ENT. I wait like four months for an ENT appointment and she did loads of tests on me. She tested for BPPV, she tested my inner ears and all sorts of things. She tested for nystagmus and stuff like that. And she couldn't find anything wrong, shocker. So she referred me to a neurologist. I had the ENT appointment in December 2019 and then I met with the neurologist. It was supposed to be in May 2020. That was such a long wait for a neurologist. Um, but they actually cancelled my appointment because I had moved ad addresses, even though this was a phone consultation. So I was like, why the hell does my address matter when it's on the phone? It was so frustrating. But anyway, they made me another appointment for September 2020. And we finally spoke. And he was the first one to really take me very seriously. He organised me an MRI scan and a CT scan. Um, and then I had those in December 2020. So it had been almost two years before I even knew what the hell was wrong with me. And I hope that never happens to anyone else because two years to wait not knowing what's going on with you, thinking that you're gonna die, is traumatic. I'm really sad that the medical field doesn't really know much about dizziness. I'm, I'm glad that people are learning more about it. You know, people that have gone through it like me, I am reading so many books to become a coach because it's just a terrifying experience when no one can validate what's going on and they're just telling you that you're crazy. And that just makes it worse because then your family will be like, well, you're just, you're just faking it. You're putting it on. It's just anxiety, all that stuff. And it's just so unhelpful and it really, really makes such a difference to healing when you know that you are not dying. So I finally got diagnosed. It wasn't even by my neurologist. It was actually by a physiotherapist who knew so much about triple BD uh, and vestibular illnesses in general. And he, he was the first one to mention the words triple BD. And I cried after that appointment because I was like, oh my God, someone knows what's wrong with me. I actually saw a functional neurologist and he also said that this is like a nervous system triple, he didn't say the words triple PD, but I said triple PD and he was like, yes, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. So yeah, that's how I was diagnosed. Question 23, what was the cause of your triple PD? Well, um, it could be many different things. I had a lot of stressful periods leading up to April, 2019, which was when it hit me. I had health anxiety for many years and I was always worried that something was gonna happen to me and it did. Yeah, so I think it was just a buildup of stress and panic over a few months and just being so hyper vigilant of my body already and then having triple PD just heightened it all and just made it a hundred times worse and it kept getting worse for the first year and a half because I was just terrified that I was dying. So yeah, I think stress and anxiety was the cause of my triple BD. Question 24, which VRT exercises did I do and how often? I will show you which ones I did. Pack of cards. I use a pack of cards because that's what the steady coach recommended. So I took a playing card. I focused on one of the suits and I would move it side to side like this. That was the first one I did. I also did it up and down, looking at it. And then I also kept it still and moved my head back and forth and up and down. I also threw a ball up and down while keeping my eye on it. I would also stand on a cushion with my arms crossed like this, eyes closed, and kind of get my balance on the cushion. Um, I would also walk heel to toe, like tandem walking. That was a good one. And now my balance is amazing. <laughs> I can literally stand on one leg for like a minute with my eyes closed. Because of all this training I've done, my balance is impeccable now. Those were the main ones I did. Um, as well as walking outside, 
I highly recommend to get out the house and do some real life walking, not just like robotic movements because that's not really real life. I recommend to make a list of your triggers and then use those to make your own VRT exercises because everyone is different, everyone needs different ones. For me, it was when I moved my head side to side, like I couldn't stay, my eyes couldn't stay trapped on a target, so that's what I mainly worked on. But obviously if you don't have a problem with that, then that's not gonna help you. So I would definitely recommend to make your own program. It's definitely possible, you know, you don't need a doctor for all of this, you really don't. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, I made my own program eventually, but I was using the Steady Coaches program at first. Um, she gave me a lot of good exercises to do and she actually has a whole video on VRT. So I will link that in the description and hopefully that will help you. And I did those exercises twice a day, every day for two months. And I stopped after two months because I felt like I didn't really need it anymore because I was doing more real life stuff. So yeah, I, I recommend like one to three times a day, three times a day maximum. As the steady coach says, you don't have to be perfect at this. You don't have to write them down on a whiteboard. That's exactly what I was doing. I was keeping such eager track of my VRT. And I think that kind of just amplified the symptoms because I was just concentrating on them all the time. Question 25 is, did I ever take any medication and how long are you meant to take medication to help this? So I actually went on nortriptyline for three weeks and then I stopped it because I knew that I didn't want to use medication. I've always been pretty anti-medication to be honest. Um, but for this kind of thing, they recommend at least six months that you're on the medication, I think. And then you kind of start to wean off once the symptoms are gone. Um, at least that's what I've heard. But yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't take any medication. Question 26, what should I do to get better? And this is a huge question, obviously, that could probably be answered in its whole own video. To make this short and sweet, I would say the main thing you need to do is to regulate your nervous system. So to do that, somatic tracking, deep breathing, meditation, singing, anything you can do to kind of uh, activate your vagus nerve is great. Humming even, it's so great to be in touch with your body and get into the mind-body connection. Uh, but meditation is great for that, yoga is great for that, anything you can do to calm down. <laughs> calm down is the the two words that are so important to healing. And I know it sounds simple, but of course it's not. But that's, yeah, that's like the main goal. What I did to get better was a mixture of all of those things. And I have another video on that, but you need to take steps every single day towards healing. So you need to ask yourself, is what I'm doing right now good for me or not good for me? Is what I'm doing right now going to benefit me in the future or hinder me in the future? You know, what can I do right now to make this a bit easier for myself? What can I do to support myself right now? Start talking to yourself as if you were a little child who needs help or like a friend who needs help. Someone that you really care for because this is like, you should really care about yourself. You are the most important thing in your world and you need to start taking care of yourself and you probably weren't taking great care of yourself. That's why you got triple PD in the first place, you know, and I'm not saying that to blame you in any way. It's just that when we ignore our emotional needs, it can trigger our nervous system to do all sorts of things. And that's probably one of the reasons why we ended up here. I think the most important one is to not avoid activities. Uh, I know I did that a lot in the beginning and it's quite detrimental to healing because your brain stops understanding normal life and it feels so foreign when you go out and do something normal and it feels like unsafe in a way. Definitely start introducing normal activities back into your life and use the calming practices while you do it and that will eventually help your brain to learn that they're not threatening. Question 27, second to last, is uh, will this get better with time? And in my experience, yes it will. In Lots of people's experience, yes. Don't be surprised if you have some ups and downs along the way, but if you do all of these practices every day with mindfulness and love for yourself, yeah, of course it will get better with time. I've seen it. I've seen people get better. I've seen people message me like, oh my God, my symptoms are gone. Like, hell yeah, they're gone. That's what I'm talking about. And it's totally possible for you to get better. I'm gonna promise you that it gets better with time. Only if you do the things you need to do. You can't just sit there and expect it to just get better on its own if you're not gonna make some changes. You need to make some changes in order to see results. 
Question 28, this is the last question. It is, do you have any advice to get through the medical system a bit faster in order to get diagnosed? I would ask your GP to immediately refer you to a functional neurologist and a regular neurologist so you can get some MRI scans, CT scans done and out the way. I would also ask your GP to do some blood tests for you. Those are like the main things you need. I would do an MRI scan of the brain, whole spine and the inner ears. Uh, that will rule out MS, that will rule out brain tumours, that will rule out um, SCD, anything wrong with the inner ears, you know, that will rule all of that out in one go. So I would definitely try that. But yeah, a functional neurologist is the one who diagnosed me. Uh, I would also see a physiotherapist and basically go straight to a uh, vestibular, like, audiologist because those are the people who really know what they're talking about when it comes to this kind of thing. So a neurologist is to rule out any serious medical condition, but I would avoid going to loads of other doctors because they don't really know what this is. I would go straight to an audiologist or um, physiotherapist, yeah. So those are the people I would recommend to go to. So I hope that video was really helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. I know it was a long video, but I put all the timestamps below so you can just click on whatever question you want answered. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.